So yesterday we talked about a few states of database, not all states. The objective of learning the uh, different learning different states of database is uh, to understand uh, in which state my database is and if there is any problem, what kind of problem is there and how can we uh, troubleshoot. So we have not yet still talk about the troubleshooting part, right? Uh, the first state that we talked about that is online. Online means uh, my database is available for connections uh, to users and applications. It means that if my database is online and at the same time it is in multi-user mode, you can set a database in single user mode too uh, that I show you yesterday uh, using the command alter database, database name and uh, uh, then uh, set single user and after that we also used uh, uh, with clause with rollback immediate right but the basic command is alter alter database database name set single user so if database is single user and uh, it is online also it will be accessible only by one user as the name suggests right but if it is in multi-user mode which is supposed to be hence sql server is a uh, multi-user database system, right? So all databases should be in multi-user mode, right? Multi-user is a mode of database, whereas, uh, you know, uh, online, offline, restoring, recovering, uh, suspect, emergency, these are the states of database. And uh, uh, under the output uh, of Sys databases, uh, you will see that uh, perhaps from Sys databases. Yes, Sys databases, you will see that uh, the state is shown as uh, uh, a status. Let me show you what I am talking. So is management studio started? It is a starting. Okay, let it come. So what I was talking is if my database is online, we are fine. If it is not, right, then it may be in any of the state. It may be offline. Uh, it may be in recovering a state. It may be in restoring a state, right? Uh, it may be in suspect state. In different state, it can be. Now we have, if we have understanding of all the states, then we will have to find the reason why my database in, in, is, is in this state. If it is offline, uh, definitely uh, it is not available for users and connections, right? So in that case, we have to bring our database uh, online. Uh, who is not available in this training? Who dropped? Okay. So using the sys databases, uh, which is available under DBOS schema in master database, right? You can find the database status, right? Using the database property X function. This database property X is a uh, system defined function, internal function, and that you can use uh, to get information of your database get different properties properties information of your database. So uh, I want to check the recovery model of my database. Today I'm going to talk about that, right? I want to know the status of my database. So the state, when I, I'm talking about database states, that refers to database status, right? The object term is database state. And these are information you can get from uh, sys databases uh, view uh, from uh, uh, from master database, right? Uh, this is a global system variable at double at the rate server name. Any variable which starts with double at the rate sign is known as global variable. And uh, server name, uh, double at the rate server name is a global system variable. It is uh, uh, defined uh, uh, internally in SQL Server. So it returns you the server name. Right, for example, if I execute it only this part, it will return you the server name. 
on which your SQL Server is running, right? Or it will return you the instance name, uh, something like that. Then, then uh, it is uh, your uh, database name. It will return the database uh, database name uh, from the sys databases. Then its property uh, for recovery model uh, using the database X property. You can get recovery of the database, right? And using the uh, database X property, uh, you can get the status of the database, right? So let us execute this command now all together to see their status. So this is the server name. This is these are database names. Uh, and these are the related recovery models in which my databases are. And this is the status of my database or the state of my database, right? Of my databases. So my, my database, in what state I don't want to see my database. I don't want to see my database in offline state until and unless there is uh, there is no a specific reason uh, for putting the database in offline state. I don't want to see my database in suspect state. I will talk about that. I don't want to see my database in emergency state. Otherwise, emergency state, uh, in emergency state, uh, as an administrator, you can put the database. But uh, Automatically, your database will never come in emergency state. It will come in suspect state. Interesting thing that we talked yesterday was in recovery, right? So uh, let me tell you why I talked uh, that so deeply and I'm going to talk more about that. Uh, what happens actually when you restart your SQL Server engine, a uh, lot of transactions are going on some insert transactions, some delete transactions, some update transactions are going on against your uh, databases. Say for example, you have 10 databases hosted on, on, on your SQL server and thousands of users are connected to that database. They are executing their transactions. Uh, some transactions have been committed. Some are still running, which are in active state, right? So what will happen? Those transactions, which are in active state, they have to be they have to be rolled back rolled back means undone roll back means whatever uh, transactions has done that has to be undone right uh, that is the rollback process rollback is also known as undo process and undo runs as a thread uh, everywhere where it is sql server or oracle it's it's a uh, you know uh, it, it, it's it, it's a, it, it, it runs as a background process, uh, as a thread. Likewise, redo uh, uh, is a uh, redo, redo operation is also known as, uh, you know, uh, roll forward operation, right? So what, is, what does roll forward means? Uh, that uh, whatever transactions have been committed, but yet not uh, hardened on, on the data file, the result resultant data has not yet been hardened in the data file, right? Uh, those have to be uh, roll forward, right? So uh, that is done during the recovery process, right? So what happens that if I have a large database and say, for example, uh, 500 transactions were running uh, in the server when my uh, server got system my, my server got rebooted or my database engine crashes. There may be two possibility. For any reason, uh, your database engine uh, may have crashed and that crash uh, we can, uh, you know, reproduce using the restart or a stop of database engine. Uh, so for any reason, if your database engine crashes, then what will happen? Uh, your database will go into recovery phases right that we uh, saw yesterday so in that case here, here the database state will be shown as uh, in recovery right now how much time now the database is recovering right your your say for example your server rebooted or your database engine crashes and uh, your database is showing in recovery right now the end users are asking end users which are the you know uh, consumer of your database right end users are asking that uh, they are unable to connect the database 
so you will you will uh, tell them that i can see that database is recovering it is in in recovery state the next question they will ask you how much time it will take to recover have you ever faced this problem anyone no next question they will ask you that how much time it will take to recover right yes. so then how you can ensure them that this much time it will take to recover how can you ensure them right so you can ensure them just by reading the error log file and to read the error log file you have a simple store procedure known as sp read error log right let us execute it and see here yesterday uh, we saw that something was logged in our uh, error log related to uh, see it related to the recovery of the database right so you can see recovery of database was being done here right and first it was from where it started just a minute guys i will be back in a minute I'm back now. So here you see in the error log file from where the recovery started of this database. Uh, every database is being uh, you know recovered. You can see against every database. Uh, you can see parallel redo is started for test or demo DB. Likewise, uh, this was taking very less time. Uh, my demo db parallel redo is started one transaction rollback so we are interested to see our adventure works uh, recovery right uh, so where is that let me find adventure works uh, parallel redo is a started for database adventure works 2016 you have to look into error log file for the particular database which is showing in in recovery state and here you can see uh, recovery of uh, when it got uh, 21 okay it was done today also right today is 21st so 10 transactions roll forward in database you can see here and at the same time you are seeing the percentage recovery of database uh, this adventure was 2016 with database id 5 is 90 percent completed likewise you will see the progress recovery completed for database this so if your database is large and a lot of transactions were going on at the time when your database engine crashed or your server rebooted right you will see this progress uh, that within one minute uh, say for example 
20% recovery have been completed. So if 20% database recovery have been completed in one minute, right? Uh, then you can say that next five minutes, your database will take to complete the recovery for 100%, right? So, so this will give you an idea of estimation to convey to the end users that how much time my database will take, take, to, uh, take to come online. You all are clear with this point now? This is why I was emphasizing on this. I faced so, this situation so many times, especially against large databases. When this database engine was restarted or the database engine was crashed uh, or when the server was rebooted, right? Uh, against the large databases, you just were unable to connect at least for uh, sometimes 10 minutes, 30 minutes, right? Uh, sometimes I saw the case, even an hour it took to recover, right? So it depends upon the number of active transactions which we are going on at the, at the time of the crash of, of database engine or at the time of your server reboot. Got it? You all are clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question here? Irmias, Max, Abhishek, those who are, oh, I think Irmias is from development, uh, development background, right? Sir, I have seen uh, database comes online once second uh, phase is completed, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 not second phase. All phases have to be completed. The first, I'm going to talk about this phase. First phase is your analysis phase. Second phase is redo phase. Third phase is mm -hmm. undo phase, right? So uh, both, maybe both are not required, right? Okay. Maybe uh, roll forward and roll back may not be required or they may be required. It depends upon uh, in what states transactions were there, right? Okay. It, it depends upon that. So if uh, I have, I don't have, you know, uh, any active transaction that was uh, that was running uh, during uh, during the, uh, the 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 crash, right? I don't have any active transactions, uh, so in that case, you will not see rollback, right? Okay. Those transactions which have been committed but yet not hardened to the data file, their resultant. What is the resultant of any transaction? The resultant of any transaction is writing the result uh, of that transaction into the data file. That is the final resultant, isn't it? For example, if I am, let me explain you. These are very basics, but important things. Many people do not understand it. So let me write a simple update command here. Uh, let us change the database context. Update and let us update a table say sales order detail table and let us update the unit price column value unit price and equals to say two thousand dollar and then give some condition here where uh, sales order id equals to three four five six nine something like that sales order detail ID is the column ID, right? Three, four, five, six, nine. I don't know whether this value is there in the table or not, so let me check it. Select star from this table. Four, three, Six five nine is there, right? Four three six five nine. Okay, now this is a transaction. All are agree. This is a transaction. All are agree or not? I guess so. Which yes. kind of transaction it is? Uh, is it D DML? No, 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 I'm not talking. Is it an Ex implicit transaction or an explicit transaction? Can anybody it, tell me? This is implicit transaction. Implicit. 
yes this is implicit transaction because it is in auto commit mode auto commit mode right right it is in auto commit mode when this transaction will execute we are not specifying uh, that this transaction should commit right after uh, the transaction is completed right so that's why this is known as implicit transaction to make it explicit what we have to do we have to run this transaction or this update statement uh, within uh, begin tron and we have to end it uh, with uh, you know explicit commit statement right so even you can write the rollback also here so any transaction which starts with begin tron and end either and end either with commit or rollback is known as explicit transaction so now it's a transaction explicit transaction right when we will execute this transaction what will happen first it will be written into transaction log cache right i'm telling you the entire story now it will be be written into transaction log cache first after that it will be written into transaction log file right we have two files in each database one is data data file with an extension dot mdf and another file we have a uh, transaction log file with an extension dot ldf right so after writing this transaction into the transaction log cache this transaction will be written into transaction log file right so when this transaction will be written in the transaction log file right then the transaction status is you know active it starts executing when it starts executing right then what will happen first it will uh, you know occupy this transaction uh will send a request to the lock manager to provide an exclusive lock on the rows or or pages which matches with this condition so with this condition we have 12 rows you can see here right so in this case there are two possibilities either 12 row level locks will be occupied by this transaction on 12 rows of cells or a detail table or if this 12 row fit in a single page or two pages then those 12 uh, row level locks will be escalated by the lock manager internally to one or two page level locks so if you do not understand that nothing to worry we have not discussed anything about locking right now just i am telling you the story when the update lock will be occupied by this transaction either on these 12 rows or these 12 rows are the part of one or two pages data pages so if the lo update lock is occupied on those two pages right then then only what will happen the write operation will start so before the write operation will start that update lock will be escalated or promoted by lock manager to exclusive lock right and then the writing process will start so this writing is a modification process it will modify the existing unit price column values these 12 values that we have here in different different rows different 12 values we have uh, so those will be modified right with 2000 now the modification is done right these all things are happening in your sql buffer right the modification is done now this modification uh, which has been done in the data pages that is in sql buffer has to be written you know back to back to the disk right so that happens when when the transaction will complete this modification will complete then this transaction will commit so at this stage even though my transaction is committed right the data is not written the modified data is not yet written to the disk so after commit the hardening process take place so after hardening the resultant data i mean that that is modified right with the modified page uh, will be written back to the disk right that that is the complete uh, flow of operation 
that is what i wanted to explain here so we are going in different direction right Uh, I cannot hear you. So we are not able to hear you. Right. Recovering, right? Uh, uh, recovering or yeah, tell me. Uh, you are not audible. I am not audible. Now we can hear you now. But for some time. Okay. Okay. So now you all are clear when the database is showing in, in recovery or recovering a state, what does it mean? I think that you all are clear now, right? What does it mean if my database is showing in recovery or recovering? What does it mean? Tell me. Tell me guys, then only I can understand that whatever I am delivering, you people are grasping. Tell me something. If my database state, if I see here, it is in recovering or in, it is in, uh, it is showing recovering a state or it is showing in recovery. What does that, that mean? What it is doing? It's simple, Yar. Either it is, uh, you know, uh, rolling back some transactions or it is roll, rolling forward some transactions. That is what it is doing. That's it. And that, that you saw using the SP read error log command, right, in the output, that, that some transactions are being roll forwarded, some transactions are being rolled back, right? Roll forward means uh, redo, roll back means uh, roll back means undo. Right, so some transactions are undone or some transactions are redone. That is what the in recovery phase says. All are clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Sometimes you will see your database recovery is pending, right? In that case, there are two things. Uh, what you can do when your database is showing recovery pending a state, right? Then at that time, the best remedy is to <clears throat> first you try to recover your database with recovery, restore uh, database uh, database name, uh, restore uh, what command we used yesterday. Do you remember? Restore. Sure. Restore database. Database. Uh, database database name. Recovery. Database name, name. to yes. location. Not to location. No location, just set recovery. Yes, just oh. we have to not set recovery. Ah, okay. with, recovery. Recovery. with recovery, with recovery. Right, you have to use this. So if it is showing recovery pending, just first, first remedy should be uh, to go with this command, right? You will be able to recover your database. If that is not working, then uh, you should, uh, but in that case, you you will be not allowed to take the database offline, right? So in, in that case, uh, from the recovery stage, what you can do, the only remedy is then to restart the database engine. That is a big, draw, a big drawback, right? So if recovery pending it is showing, then uh, you, you should go first with this command. Um, in most of the cases, it will work, but if it doesn't work, right then you will have to restart the database engine that the problem but you have to do so why why it is go uh, goes into recovery pending state sir sometimes what happens that it does not have uh, enough information uh, in its uh, 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 analysis phase you know that i'm going to talk for rolling back or roll forward the transactions so it has to uh, rebuild uh, uh, it, the uh, information uh, for rolling back or roll forward the transactions. What I am talking, uh, I will explain uh, just just after a few uh, minutes. So, okay, or or let us talk about that first. If we are talking about recovery, so what happens? There are three phases of database recovery. Whenever you restart your database engine, or whenever any automatic failover occurs or whenever a database uh, engine crash uh, happened, right, uh, happens, then in that case, 
your all databases have to go into uh, recovery phases in order to recover the database and bring it online. So where is that? Recovery phases are, or is it under D? Database, where is database? Database recovery phases. So there are three phases of recovery of the database. The first phase is analysis. Second phase is uh, redo or roll forward. Third phase is undo or roll back. What happens that uh, if I say, for example, if I, uh, let us do that again. Uh, let me run some transactions again. Actually, it is happening. Let us cancel it. Let us run it as a single transaction so that it will take some time either to roll back or roll forward. So let us make it a single transaction here. Mm. Let us execute this. Didn't run. You missed run. What is missing? Oh, begin run. Begin run. Begin run. Begin run. Oh, sorry. Begin run. Insert into this. Now it should be fine. So it's running now. Uh, let it run a few times. Four, five times. 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds, 17, 23, 24. Let it go up to nine times. Six, let us restart the database in now. It's not really starting. Good. My transaction was not completed at the time when the restart process is started. That's good. <clears throat> now it is starting. Let us refresh it. What I'm going to explain is a very advanced question asked in interview. What are the different phases of recovery in database? How database recovery is done, right? You can see now this database is in, in the recovery process. And if I read it through reader log using SP uh, read error log, You come down, you can see here 
percent, 5%, 37%, 37% recovery has been completed, right? So this database is recovering and recovery of database, this, this phase two of third, it is showing, it means that it consists of three phases. Uh, let us see it again. What is the status, whether my database has been recovered or not? So it's saying still recovery is going on 41%, right? If you refresh it, still it should be uh, now, now, now it is online. So now if you read it again, right, then your database must have been recovered. Uh, this is how the durability of database is maintained. Uh, are you all clear with the concept of uh, uh, concept of ACID, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability? So, what are these four properties? Can anybody explain? What is atomicity, what is consistency, what is isolation, and what is durability? Why I'm asking that using this uh, database recovery process, SQL Server ensures durability. So what durability says that, that uh, data inside the database must remain in the same state in which it was at the time of database engine crash or database engine restart. You all are getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? So that is what the durability says. Data inside every... Can you every... Please repeat that point again? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because... Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that you can note it down. I have documents also I will send you and we will have complete discussion on ACID because this is the most important question asked in interview, right? And this single question can judge your depth in SQL Server. So one question is what is ACID? ACID and the advanced question is how ACID properties are implemented in SQL Server, right? So I'm talking about the last one, durability D. Durability says that data inside each of the databases hosted on my SQL Server must remain in same state when my database engine restarts, Right or when my databases come come uh, databases come online in in what state they were during the time of crash of the database engine. Right. So so that is achieved using uh, this recovery of database. Now you can see here one transaction in database uh, rolled back. Right, it was rolled back completely and recovery is writing checkpoint to the database in this recovery completed for database and how much time it took you can see uh, it took uh, 191 seconds means that it took more than three minutes right analysis phase took 41 ms redo phase uh, uh, took 24285 milliseconds uh, it means that it took 24 seconds this is in milliseconds. You can divide it by 100,000. Uh, thousand, so it is 24 seconds. And undo took 90. Uh, how much this value is? 16 or 19? 16. 160. 160. Uh, so so it's, it's 16 seconds. Uh, no. Oh, 166 no, no. seconds. One, yes, yes. It's 166, six, 166 seconds. So most of the time, was taken by the undo process, means that most of the time was taken for rolling back the transactions, right? So that's why you see here, the major portion is here, transaction roll backed, right? So let us talk about the recovery phase. From here, what we find, there are three phases of recovery, right? One is analysis, another is redo, third is undo. That is what you see here. 
it means uh, that every time uh, the service has restarted for any x y z reason it yes. also went into three uh, uh, stages right yes yes and the second is when an automatic failover occur or you do a manual failover say for example uh-huh. if your databases are configured in uh, database mirroring right uh in in synchronous mode of communication and you are doing uh, either an automatic uh, you are doing a manual failover uh, or if uh, automatic failover is happening so uh, all data the failover will happen on the secondary server or on the secondary databases right so all secondary databases will have to recover and during the recovery they have to go under these three phases right so okay. during in in always on also right when the failover occurs from primary to secondary uh, mm-hmm. availability group or primary to secondary server right at that time also all databases on secondary server go into recovery the, these three recovery phases right so sir uh, uh, hmm. and i think uh, as uh, it took the error low i think it is a single thread process right no it's not a single thread process redo is a different thread undo is a different thread right it's not a single thread process okay. there are two two threads redo is a single thread and undo is a single thread there are two threads you can see also parallel or uh, redo thread is shut down well, somewhere undo must also be there it's a two two thread process bus be somewhere if you uh, yes. find in in the log you will you will see that okay so now what happens uh, is that when your database engine really starts or your database engine crashes then your databases uh, have to go under recovery phases uh, so during the recovery process uh, there are three phases uh, that has to be uh, uh, under which each database has to go right so for each database first of all uh, the analysis uh, step is performed after that redo or undo is performed either both can be performed or any one of them can also be performed just a minute so sir so sir in analysis phase it basically calculate how much transaction going to be redo or undo right or is there anything in analysis phase sir can you hear me sir said uh, would be back in a minute oh okay uh we are not able to hear you sir oh sorry sorry i was on mute what i was saying that if uh do you, what what sql server does uh sql server creates two tables for, which are related to the transaction information uh by reading the transaction log file right well the first table is known as dirty page table 
and second table is known as active transaction table so you will be able to understand these two uh, that what sql server does during analysis phase only when you have understanding of the transaction log file and how transactions are written into transaction log file right so can anyone explain about the uh, logical architecture of transaction log file do you have idea of that little bit sir yeah go ahead so sir uh, basically when we uh, we perform any transaction so first it came into buffer and then uh, first it lie uh, write that uh, log uh, i mean first it write the logs into log file then it came back to buffer and check if there is data available if it is available in buffer then it return the result set or the no no I, I i didn't ask that i asked about the architecture of transaction log file and how transactions are written in transaction log file so transactions log file uh, it's uh, internally internally converted into vlf uh, of 64 kb i think and uh, that goes up to the size of the log file we have defined or if it is in uh, increasing more so it will add that vlf that much well vlf to i mean the size of the and that it starts uh, writing on logs um, into vlf uh, so i think this is how it works it okay let me show you i can explain but i want to show you it drama uh, uh through through diagram that's why i'm searching for the document uh let me come to here this is another very important aspect of uh you know administration because uh, once you have good understanding on the architecture of transaction log file then only you will be able to uh, troubleshoot the issue transaction log uh, full transaction log full issue you will be easily able to you know uh, are you here sir uh, we lost you we are not able to hear you maybe some network issue was it lost for some time yes uh, yes sir okay okay what i was saying oh, let me see yes recording is going on so what i was saying that every database has a transaction log file and that transaction log file is a physical file with an extension .ldf and it resides on disk on on a, on the given path or the folder right all are agree yes sir yes yes okay, sir okay now this transaction log file is a uh, physical file right and all transactions have to be written into that transaction log file now think about uh the situation that how many transactions can be written in a single transaction log file it depends upon its size right so right. even though i have set it to unlimited that is up to 2 terabyte and the i am in question <laughs> i don't have the disk of 2 terabyte here f drive if you go to see what is the size of my f drive right so if i come to my pc uh my f drive size is only 300 gb right 290 gb but i have left it to uh, grow up to 2 terabyte right if you convert this this value it will it will uh, into terabyte it will be 2 terabyte right so uh, up to how much size this log file can grow this can grow up to uh, the you know size that is uh, free here so 242 gb is free right yes. so my maximum size that <coughs> this log file can grow is up to 
240 uh, 2 GB. But even though we are writing the transactions, uh, transactions are written uh, every seconds, every minute, right? Uh, thousands and uh, in some cases, millions of transactions are written per day in the database, right? So there will be a time uh, in one month, two months, three months, four months, right? Not more than that. Uh, I think that there will be a time within a month. Whatever space you allocate to the transaction log file that you will see will be filled, right? But usually that is not filled. Usually that is not filled. Why and how? Let us try to understand that. To make the physical file, say for example, I have given it 610 MB as initial size and I left it to grow up to 200, 200 GB say for example. So my log file uh, will be written right in that space that I have allocated to it. And uh, there will be a time come when that will be full. But what, 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 what is the objective here? Objective is to make the uh, space, storage space of the log file reusable, right? So that when uh, a transaction is completed, right, and committed, uh, we don't need that, right? So that it can be removed from uh, or deleted from, uh, you know, the transaction log, log file. So for that, let us try to understand it. This is a very important topic. My transaction log file is divided into multiple virtual log files. Virtual log files uh, in short are called VLFs, right? V for virtual L log F file, virtual log file. So say for example, if I have a log file uh, up to say, for example, uh, 8 GB, right? In that case, I will have uh, near about, uh, uh, near about uh, 16 VLFs. Uh, there is no adject calculation there that how many VLFs will be there, uh, but uh, uh, in, 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 a, in, in, in a log file, but this is a simple, uh, you know, estimation that if the file size of the, if the log file size is less than or equal to one MB, right, it's equal to divide the size of the log file by the minimum VLF size 30 uh, into eight KB. And it reminds the number of VLFs. If the file size is between one MB and 64 MB, there will be four VLFs in that log file. And if the file size is between 64 MB and one GB, there will be eight VLFs, but we have, and if the file size is greater than one uh, GB, we will have 16 VLFs uh, there, but uh, more the log size is there, you will see more VLFs you have. It doesn't mean that if you have one GB of more great, uh, if your log file size is greater than one GB, you will have only 16 VLFs. There will be more VLFs. I will show you how you can see the VLF of a, of a, uh, log file. Can anybody tell me how you can see the VLF of a log file? No, sir. Yeah, that is very easy. So that command noted down is dbcc log info, right? It's very simple. Note it down. This will give you the number of VLFs that your log file have currently. So the number of rows it is returning, it is 66, uh, 66 now here. So these all denotes your VLFs, right? This 64 VLFs are there, right? Now I will talk more about these, these things here. I will talk more. So now you come to know how many VLFs you have in your log file. So VLFs are the, uh, you know, uh, logical divisions of one physical file. So in, 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 in a physical file, there are multiple logical VLFs. Now, why each, log, each physical log file is divided into multiple VLFs? Try to understand that. So the objective is to make the space of a log file, a storage space of log file reusable so that uh, the transactions with, with which we are done 
uh, should be uh, deleted or eliminated from the transaction log file uh, or truncated from the transaction log file so that new transactions can be written. That is the objective of dividing physical a, a physical log file into multiple, uh, you know, uh, multiple logical virtual uh, virtual log files, multiple VLFs. So the objective is only to make the storage space reusable. How it is possible? Let us talk about that. So for that, every VLF maintains its state. So for example, this is my one uh, first VLF. This is my second VLF. This is third, fourth. There are many VLFs you can see here. Six VLFs are there. Sorry. <clears throat> Every VLF has some state. The first state of any VLF is free. Let us see those states here. Or this is also known as unused. Unused or free means that no transaction has been written in that VLF earlier. It is completely free for, or, or uh, yes, it is completely free for writing new transactions in the transaction log file. Clear? Once the transaction is written into transaction log file, and while that transaction is running, while that transaction is executing, the state of VLF is changed to active. Active means it is the transaction is right now executing. The transaction is currently active. Transaction is in process state. It is executing. That is the active state of any VLF, right? When the transaction completes, right? When the transaction completes, then the state active is changed to recoverable. It means that this VLF can be recovered. It means that the transaction that this VLF contains is not active right now. And this VLF is waiting uh, you know, for uh, a backup, or there are many things, uh, or, or a checkpoint to occur. I will talk about that. Uh, basically, these are related to your recovery models too. So we will have to discuss about recovery model two today. If your database is in simple recovery model, <coughs> right, transactions are still written in the log file because SQL Server works on a principle or a philosophy that is known as write ahead logging. This is very important question asked in interview, what is wall protocol? Especially if you are going to be interviewed in TCS, they will ask this question. What is wall protocol? Anybody face this question in interview? No? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So you may be asked this question, especially if you are going to be interviewed in TCS or Microsoft, right? So people will ask this question. What is WAL protocol? W-A-L protocol. W-A-L stands for write ahead logging, which simply means that before any transaction starts to execute, it is first written into transaction log cache and transaction log file, right? It's, it's, it's simple, right ahead logging. So before any transaction starts to execute, it is first written into transaction log file and uh, sorry, transaction log cache and transaction log file. That is right ahead logging. So <clears throat> if your uh, database is in simple recovery model, uh, I am talking those who are new to SQL Server, I am talking about this. Let me show you. Uh, under the options, you will see recovery model of the database. I will talk about that today also. So there are three recovery models of the database you can see, uh, simple, bulk log, and full. So if your database is in simple recovery model, what happens? Whatever transactions are being done 
they are written into transaction log file, but they get truncated or deleted from transaction log file when the checkpoint process runs. Checkpoint is a background process, right? That helps you in, uh, you know, uh, hardening your data. Once the commit is completed, after that your data is hardened. So one, once the checkpoint runs, uh, the 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 committed uh, you know uh, transactions, uh, the resultant data of committed transactions are hardened to your data file. Hardened means hardened means hardening is a process of writing data into data file in SQL Server. Many people maybe may ask you <coughs> question: What is hardening? So hardening is a process of writing data into data file. When it occurs, so uh, it occurs uh, whenever the checkpoint process runs, right? Checkpoint is a background process, which is responsible for hardening data, uh, you know, uh, to the data file. Now, next question is when the checkpoint process runs. So it depends upon your recovery interval time. All things are related, right? I'm trying to, and I always deliver my training in integrated fashion, which topics are related to which one that will give you the better knowledge. So that, this is a server level setting. Let me go there. Uh, it's not a database level setting, recovery interval point, that, that is what I told you. Uh, come to database settings and you see here, uh, <coughs> recovery interval, right? Recovery interval. By default, the value of recovery interval is zero. What is the objective of recovery interval? The objective of recovery interval is to minimize the recovery time of your database whenever your database engine restarts or whenever your database engine crashes. So how, how, how it is possible, right? So here you, the value of recovery interval time in minutes you see is zero. That is equivalent to one minute or 60 seconds. It means that whatever value you set here on the interval of that, the checkpoint process runs, the checkpoint process runs. Checkpoint is a background process, right? And it hardens the data of, of, for the committed transactions into the data file, right? So if it runs on every one minute, it means that since the last one minute, whatever transactions have been done, and if they have been not hardened to the disk, right? Then in that case, only we, we, it, SQL Server will have to recover those databases. So it reduces the recovery time of database. Less the value of recovery interval time is, less the recovery time for your database when your database engine will restart, stop or start or restart. So if the recovery, now the question is, what should be the minimum time here? Yes, you cannot, you know, uh, specify a time less than 60 seconds here. Uh, this value you have to specify in minutes. Uh, zero means 60 seconds or one minute. So you can increase the time and usually that you should not do. You should not increase this time by two minutes or three minutes, right? Likewise, you should not increase that. The best option is leave it to zero. The default one, which is 60 seconds, that is equivalent to one minute. It means that on interval of every one minute, my checkpoint process runs. All are getting? Any confusion here? No, sir. Yes. Okay. So my checkpoint process executes on every 60 seconds. Right. What happens when your database is in simple recovery model? Then whatever transactions have been written in the transaction log file, those transactions will be truncated. Right. But that is not true when your database is in full recovery model. Right. In that case, what will happen? Transactions will be written in the transaction log file, but Transactions will be truncated from the transaction log file only when you will take transaction log backup. We have not yet talked about transaction log backup or full backup, right? So these all things are interrelated. 
recovery model of the database, uh, you know, a recovery in travel time of the database, and then restore, uh, restoration of the database, point in time recovery of the database. These all things are interrelated. I will try to integrate these all things today, and we will discuss about that. So one should be, uh, you, you should be clear now that if your database is in full recovery model, then transactions from the transaction uh, log is cleared, right? Only when, or truncated only when, you take transaction log backup. I will show you right now. So what will happen, uh, just after this, I'm going to uh, discuss about that. Uh, what, what happens? that uh, when the transaction gets completed, the active state of the VLF uh, is changed to recoverable. And here in the recoverable state, it is waiting for uh, you know, uh, the transaction log backup, right? So when the transaction log backup is taken, then uh, the state of VLF is changed from recoverable to reusable. And when the VLF state uh, is in reusable, right? New transactions can be written in that. So this is how VLFs make your transaction log file, you know, uh, reusable. You can uh, you reuse the space of the transaction log file for writing transactions. You can reuse the space. This is why a VLF maintains its four state. Let me summarize it. The first state of any VLF is unused or free, which means that no transactions have yet been uh, uh, yet been written in in that VLF. When any transaction is written in transaction log file, and it starts executing, the state of VLF becomes uh, it, it changed uh, to active. Uh, when the uh, when when the transaction is uh, you know uh, completed and committed, the state of uh, 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 the state of VLF is changed from active to recoverable, and when the transaction log backup is taken, uh, you know uh, then the recover then the VLF state from recoverable is changed to reusable. When it is in reusable state, it means that now new transactions can be written into VLF. So in one VLF, more than one transaction can be written. Many people think that in, in one VLF, only one transaction can be written. No, that is not true. In one VLF, more than one transactions can be written. So let me talk about that. And after that, I will come to uh, backup recovery model and uh, different kinds of backups, right? So let me uh, talk about this here. Let's perform some transactions that we did. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Log hardening and committed committing same. It's the same. Or? No, it's not same. Commit means uh, still the data has not written on the data file. Commit means so after commit hardening has to take place, right? So uh, there is a probability when your database engine crashes, many transactions have been committed, but yet the data has not yet been hardened. Right. So, sir, where the data lies while committing, if it is not returning to writing to a data file. Sorry, sorry. Say again. Where where data lies actually, uh, if it is not writing to data. It is file. it is it is in the SQL buffer. Every data read or write operation happens in SQL buffer. L let us understand it here a little bit. If you have. I mean, committing to... also not guaranteed to write. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that is guaranteed. That is guaranteed. Uh, when your your date when your transaction is committed and even the database engine restarts, so that is what the roll forward process does, right? It will harden the data, all the committed transactions. It will harden the data related to all the uh, committed transactions to the data file. That is what the roll forward process does. Right. Still, you have confusion. No, sir, got it. So, someone asks that where the data is. See, any read or write operation does not is is not performed directly on disk. 
every read and write uh, operation is performed in 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 your memory right and in memory you have an area that is known as sql buffer sql buffer is the area that you assign to the max memory to sql server right here you have the memory parameters whatever memory as the maximum memory you assign to sql server right that is assigned as the sql buffer the majority of area from this max memory is assigned to sql buffer not to plan cache majority of area is consumed by your sql buffer the so sql buffer is a space in memory where all the read and write operations take place let us try to understand that if you execute this update transaction what will happen so first of all matching rows <coughs> with this condition uh will be read from the disk and loaded into memory so those rows are part of data pages in the database right so say for example these 12 it, it matches with this 12 rows starting from here to here and this 12 rows say fit into two pages right so two pages of this table will be read from the disk and loaded into memory if they are not already there in the disk if they are already there in the uh, sorry if they are not already in the sql buffer if they are already in the sql buffer then there is no need to read these uh, pages from the disk and load into memory so when the read is performed uh for example right now uh this query is looking for say for example two pages which uh where these 12 rows are and it will first search for these two pages into uh into the sql buffer right if it finds into sql buffer then there is no need to uh, uh read the data from the disk right so whenever sql server finds uh relevant data pages that it is uh, searching for uh, to fulfill uh, the request for a query right uh, that that read is known as logical read right but whenever sql server reads data pages from the disk that read is known as physical read so we will learn these things uh, during the performance training right now what will happen say for example these two pages are right now these two data pages right now are right now not available in memory so what sql server will do uh, with the help of a storage engine it will read these two pages uh, for 12 rows from the disk and will load into memory so now the read operation is completed next is modify operation due to this update set right so this now two pages are there those two pages will be modified with this new value so unit price column value for those two pages for these 12 rows will be modified now the modified pages are known as dirty pages in your memory when these two pages with 12 rows were loaded into sql buffer they were clean page when they are modified they are now known as dirty page they becomes a dirty page right now the modification has been done on those data on 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 those two data pages for the unit price column value the commit will take place the transaction gets committed but yet not hardened to disk when the checkpoint process will run the resultant uh, these two data pages will be hardened back to the disk this is the complete flow so every modification will take place not directly on the disk every read operation is not performed directly from the disk rather read and every read and write operation is performed in sql buffer you should be clear now yes sir. was that question yes you are clear now yes sir. okay let us back to the discussion someone wants to ask something so all are clear with these states now of vlf i want to ask uh, about uh, checkpoint process uh, i know we can uh, in code uh, make a checkpoint in tsql code uh, uh, we can uh, make this process by user can you <clears throat> uh, talk about this Uh, i didn't get your question you are you asking about uh, uh checkpoint process 
Uh, yes, I know. Um, we have after uh, uh, checkpoint. Yes, and uh, I know that we can make it uh, um, you know, right checkpoint uh, vault uh, and uh, make it a user by by code. Mm, well, I'm unable to understand what you are asking. Do you mean that I can specify checkpoint manually here? Do you mean that? Yes, yes. Well, that is not a good practice, right? Uh, until and unless your uh, transaction is not of high priority, uh, you should not call checkpoint manually, right? Otherwise, what will happen? If this checkpoint will be uh, the part of every transaction, say thousands of transactions are executing or hundreds of transactions are executing, uh, say in a minute, right? Or in a second. Uh, so what will happen? A uh, lot of checkpoint process uh, will consume uh, a lot of threads in SQL Server, right? And ultimately you will have, uh, you know, a scarcity of user threads. So it's not a good practice until and unless your transaction is uh, not uh, of very high priority, you should not call a specific checkpoint. Uh, checkpoint should be called by administrators only when it is it is necessary, uh, you know, uh, uh, to to, uh, to to commit the transactions uh, to to harden the transaction after the commit. Okay. You should not use it explicitly in your transactions. Checkpoint process should not be called called in frequently. I mean that. So if you can uh, drop your question right uh, in in the chat box, I can answer it better. Perhaps I did not uh, got got your question uh, the way you explained or some uh, you asked. All right, so Max, can can you type in your question in the chat box? I will try to answer. In yes, I, I, uh, I, uh, um, I ask. Uh, yeah, well, you you can go to the chat and type in your question. I will take that question. Okay. Hey, I want to say, uh, I ask uh, what you say. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine then. So let's talk more things then. Uh, guys, if you get these all things, you know, today uh, properly, right, you will become half DBA. Uh, those who are new to this DBA course, right, or DBA, you will become half of the DBA. So uh, up to L2 is standard, right, you will be now asked more than the questions that I have asked, uh, that, that I have explained. And even many of the L3s don't have such understanding the way, uh, you know, I'm, I'm delivering these topics to you in integrated fashion. So let us go back where what we were talking, let us come to the point. Yes, let us come to the VLF states first, right? So all are clear with these four states now. Why it is important to understand, let me tell you here now. Uh, let us cancel this. Let us perform some transaction. And before we perform some transactions, uh, let us check the uh, recovery mode, recovery model of this database. Uh, what is the recovery model? It is in simple recovery model. Let us change this to full recovery model. And I will show you something interesting here now. Uh, the recovery model is changed. Uh, let us do check the login for here, right? So you see in the status field, every status field, uh, every status row shows the status of, uh, you know, uh, every VLF. So status zero means either my VLF, VLF is in free state or in reusable state. It means that in these all VLFs, transactions can be written. Why you are seeing that? Because my database uh, was in 
uh, simple recovery model. That's why you see here. So transactions were written in the, in this database, but they all were cleared due to the checkpoint process, which runs on every sixty seconds, right? Now what what I have done? I have changed the recovery model of this database to full. Let me show you here. Options and recovery model of database is full now, right? Let us perform some transactions that we did earlier. Let us insert, uh, say for example, let us do it one by one. That will be somewhat faster. So we are not able to hear your voice. Oh, sorry. So what, what I was saying that we changed the recovery model of the database from uh, simple to full. And we did some transactions that you saw, right? Four times uh, we inserted five lakhs, through five lakhs rows in this table. So transactions were made and those transactions were logged or written into transaction log file. And the resultant of that is now the VLF states, uh, which we had zero earlier for most of the VLFs, now it has changed from zero to two. Two means that uh, that either my VLF is in uh, active state or is it in recoverable state. These are the two states that we talk. So two means that either my uh, either my VLF is in active state, it means that it holds the active transactions or those transactions have been committed, right? And they are waiting for transaction log backup. So they are in recoverable state. So a state uh, oh, two in VLF, a state in two, uh, VLF, when, when your VLF is in uh, a state two, it means that either that VLF is active, is in active state, or it is in recoverable state. Now, your task is to uh, to, to convert uh, or, or change the VLF state uh, from recoverable to reusable, right? And for that, what you have to do, you have to take the transaction log backup of your database, right? So right now, I uh, executed these insert statements. This is my transaction, and these were logged in the transaction log files. And that's why the VLF state was changed from zero to uh, two. Let us see it again. More tools you will see here, right? Uh, still, some VLFs are uh, available uh, to be written to, to write the new transactions, but most of the VLFs are now in state two. Right. So just just one question. In mm. case every VLF gets into uh, like there is a heavy transaction and every VLF changes mm. status to two. So mm. in that case, any upcoming transaction will go in hung state or uh, no. What so will far, happen? no, no. So so that is what I'm I'm explaining here. Mm -hmm. You must schedule your transaction log backup to happen on a certain interval, right? Okay. So and that depends you, on the frequency of transaction happening in my database. I need to set my T log backups yes. so that VLFs can be available for maintained. Right? Yes, right. yes, yes. Thank you. Right, sir. right. So here, uh, 
now i want to see that how much log space in my database is filled in percentage so those who are new to sql server please write down this command here dbcc sql perf and log a space log a space this will give me the picture of uh, the log file for each of the database that how much that log space is filled right so for adventure was 2016 i can see that it is filled 34% let us uh, let us fill it more so let us okay based on this log perf we'll decide we have to string the log database in case of a space issue or not right yes yes log yes. files right yes so when your log log file is full you will see here that log space used is uh, more than 90% or 98% or 100% sometimes 99.9% you will see so if the transaction log is full uh, then you will see here the value more than 98% 98% 99% 99.99% or sometimes 100% right okay i'm 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 just connecting the dots sir if the log space is full then we have to issue the log backup and then we are able to string the log files because yes. that will release right okay, yes so this this statement is true what you told only when your database is not part of database mirroring or always okay. on okay. right okay so when we will talk about uh, database mirroring and always on we will discuss about that right okay, sir. but okay, yes sir. if your database is not part of any high availability solution or disaster mm -hmm. recovery solution right mm -hmm. then whatever you understand that is true right okay sir okay sir so how much log space is is filled in my databases right i can check through uh, this command dbcc sql perf log space now i see that my database is filled up to 34% but uh, recently i executed this transaction to execute 10 times so let it see how many times it has executed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 let us wait for a few seconds or a minute let it be completed and then we will check for the transaction log space in percent so you will see that the transaction log space has grown now yes that is completed and now come back and check for the log space again so right now it is 34% filled here and when i will execute it you will see now it's 90% right so let us do it few times and make it full or or 90% is fine now if you check for the db uh, the the the, uh, the vlf in uh, vlf states so you will see that that what it is saying most of them are in the state 0 why okay most of them are in a state 2 oh that is the beauty i run that as a single transaction right I run that as a single transaction. Oh, that was the major mistake I did. I should have run it as different different transactions. Oh, let us do that again. meanwhile it is going on let us check for the log space it should be growing 90 90% 90 it was earlier now it is 99% right so log space is 99% filled now but still my transaction should not fail because i have allowed my database to grow up to 240 gb so auto growth will take place in that case and my log file will continue to write right but whatever the size was allocated up to that it is it is filled 99% so meanwhile the transaction is going on there is talk something different here uh what i am going to talk now is uh how i can now reduce this log size right how i can reduce so for that i will have to uh, take the transaction log backup 
but a transaction log backup can only be taken of a database if you have taken full backup of that database. Let us try to take the transaction log backup first. So to take the transaction log backup, the command is backup, backup command. This is the native backup command. Many Oracle guys will ask you the question uh, uh, that, or anyone who is from Oracle background, if he is interviewing you, he will ask the question that, uh, do you have native, native backup tool available in SQL Server for backing up databases? Answer is yes. This is the native backup tool. That is the backup command, right? So backup. You have to back up the database, so write database. Which database? Specify the name of that database. So this database I have to back up. Where to back up? I have to back up two disks, so write two disks. Right, on which path? You have to specify that path. Let me check, do we have any backup folder on my system? Uh, yes, I have a backup folder on my system in my E drive. So let us check that on the E drive backup folder. And then you are taking the full backup. So I specify the name of your database and uh, just put one keyword there full. And the best practice for uh, naming a backup file is you name the database name, uh, then put underscore full, then underscore the date. So to the date for me, it's 21, 21st March. So 2021, 20, uh, 03, 2021. Then on what, at what time I'm taking the backup? It's 11, uh, 5, 1, right? And it's AM for me. And uh, then your full backup extension must be back. Although it is not hard and fast rule followed by SQL Server, but it's better. So this is the basic command for taking the backup. If you are taking backup against a large database, so you want to track the track progress that how much percentage of your uh, backup of, of your database has been done. So for that, you can use uh, the stats keyword uh, with stats and for every uh, say for example 10 percent of backup of my database i want to track the backup status right so any question here in this backup command this is so simple backup sure. database yeah uh, aren't we planning to take the log backup no no okay you can take you no no you can take the log backup only when you have taken the full backup of the database. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, this is the first time I get it, I get it. Right, so yesterday we restored this database, you saw, right? right, right, right. And I never took the full backup. So yeah, that's yeah I free. get it, I get it. So let let me uh, let me show you that the log backup uh, will fail here. So just that replace this fail. command. And here you see for the ba uh, for, for backing up the log, here you have to replace this keyword log. Uh, log that's it backup log database name to disk and just change the name of this uh to you know trn -R -T -R -N. remove the keyword full full uh, remove yeah. the word full from here mm -hmm. right change the time now it's 53 and this is all my uh, command for taking the log backup so I want to take the log backup, transaction log backup of this database. So I have, have written this command, backup log database name to disk path, the database uh, transaction file name, uh, transaction, uh, you know, log backup name. Uh, so log backup, uh, for log backup, we follow the transaction uh, extension, uh, file extension as .trn. Mm -hmm. For full backup, we follow the transaction uh, we, we follow the extension as dot back. We give the extension dot back for full backup. We give the extension dot prn for transaction log backup. And another kind of backup we have that is differential backup. We will talk uh, that for, for that we specify what dot diff. So let us try uh, to take the transaction log backup for this database. This will fail. It will fail because we have not taken the full backup of the database. You can take the full backup of a database only when 
you have uh, you, you can take the transaction log backup of a database only when you have taken the full backup of that database first. So let me show you, it should fail. It is failing, you see, backup log uh, cannot be performed because there is no current database backup. It means that you have not taken the full backup. So now let us yes, take the full, yes, full backup here. Let us take the full backup here, right? And see, it will show you the progress on every uh, 10, uh, 10 percentages of the backup. So 10% processed, then you will see 20% processed like that. It will go on. So it, it, it is showing you the progress. So this with stats equals to uh, and some percentage, 2% or 5% or 10% is very useful if you are backing up any large database. So say, for example, you are backing up a two terabyte or uh, two, uh, two uh, TB of database, right? And uh, you have not included this stats equals to five or 10 uh, or two, something like that percent. So in that case, what will happen? You will, uh, you, you cannot estimate that how much time my backup will take, right? For that, you will have to then use some advanced commands, advanced queries to track but it's better as a DBA, you must include this uh, keyword while you are taking the backup of any database, whether it is a small or large, make it a uh, practice. It's a good practice, right? So it, it gives me the status that how much time my database will take. So say for example, if this adventure was size was one TB and 10% uh, of backup was taken say in, in uh, four minutes. So then I can guess that 10% backup was done in four minutes. So it, it would not take more than 40 minutes. So if anybody asks me uh, that how much time your backup will take, so I can uh, tell them that 10% backup has been completed in four minutes. So we hope that our backup will be completed in 40 to 45 minutes, right? That's why that keyword is very important to include in your backup commands. Now the full backup is taken. What is full backup? Full backup is nothing. Uh, your full backup is the backup of all the did all all the pages of your database. We have not yet talked about the uh, data file architecture, right? Which consists of thirteen kind of pages. One kind of page is there, or uh, data page, right? Uh, another kind of page is there, index page. Uh, then we have uh, different pages: index allocation, map page. We have differential change map page, we have bulk change map page. There are 13 kinds of pages. We will talk about that also. So a full backup of a database means that backup of all pages of a database. That's it. A database consists of multiple pages, some data pages, some index pages, some global allocation map pages, right? Some differential change map page, some bulk change map page, different kinds of pages are there. So full backup means backup of all pages of your database. That is, uh, uh, that is a very good technical definition. What is the log backup? Transaction log backup is the backup of the transactions, which were done after the full backup, right? On your, tran on, on your, uh, database. So I have taken the full backup and now I am going to perform some transactions here. Say for example, I am going to insert, uh, I am performing one transaction here. This transaction will be performed, right? I am going to update, right? Uh, these rows, the second transaction I have performed. So while insertion is going on, it should be blocked. When the insertion will be finished, then only update will be uh, completed because both are fighting for exclusive lock. So now this, this got completed. That's why this got completed. So two transactions we have made here. Now, if I am going to take the log backup of this database, so it will capture these two transactions, which happen after the full backup of the database. If 200 transactions have been performed after the full backup of the database, and I'm going to take the log backup, so those 200 transactions will be captured under this transaction log file. Are you clear now? So let us execute this and see how this transaction is going on, uh, the backup is going on. 
So all are clear that what a, a full backup captures and what a transaction log back, backup captures. All are clear? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Now we are left with differential backup, right? Yes, sir. So my transaction log backup has been taken. Hence my transaction log backup has been taken. So now if I check for, uh, I have taken the full backup. I have taken the full backup and after that I have taken transaction log backup. Right, so now uh, my VLF state sh uh, should have been changed from two to zero, from, uh, you know, uh, active or recoverable, whatever the states were there. Uh, now my VLF state should be changed uh, to, to reusable, All right? Let us check that. A uh, few of the VLF are in a state too, but most of them you can see now is still, oh. oh, we can see a lot of are still in two. So what I have to do, if you do not see that taking the log backup has cleared uh, my, uh, you know, um, VLF state uh, or change the VLF state from two to zero for most of the VLF states. Right, what should be your next action? Your next action uh, should be to take the next next transaction log backup, do it again. So for that, what I'm going to do, it's 12, 1 p.m. So just I'm going to change it to uh, 12, 0, 1, why it is not changing. Oh, sorry. 12.01 p.m. Let me do that again. This log backup has been taken. And now check for the log info here. So here we see, yes, this time now, most of the VLFs are changed from zero to two, but, 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 uh, we have to also confirm two things here. So for that, uh, let us check for the log space right now. What is the log space we have? So adventure box is still uh, seeing log space, 98% it is filled, right? Uh, what we have to do now, uh, in order to free the space, you have to do two tasks. First, you have to take the log backup of your uh, database. After that, you have to shrink the log file also, right? So to shrink the log file, you have the command noted down, dbcc shrink file, never shrink the database, right? Never use the command shrink database, use the command shrink file. So dbcc shrink file, now what to shrink? That is the question. You have to shrink the transaction log file. What is the logical name of my transaction log file? How I can find? So I can find using sp help db command followed by my database. I can find the transaction logical name of my transaction log file. So this is the logical name of my transaction log file, right? I will shrink using this name, right? This is the name of my transaction log, logical name of my transaction log file. And I want to shrink it. So with how much value I should shrink, I can specify zero or I can specify one zero two four, right? But usually uh, if you have a small initial size for your database, for example, the initial size, is it showing here initial size? What is the initial size of my database here? So I can go here and I can check my properties in my initial size. Uh, it is uh, near about one, one GB here, 1186. So the best practice is go with the initial size, 
to specify the value up to that mark you want to reduce your database uh, database uh, you know uh, uh, database log file size but you can even specify lower value also also so i want to uh, reduce it to say say to uh, let us try with zero what is happening here so right now how much log space it is occupying uh, 98% and let us come here and just shrink this log file. Let us do it again, do it two, three times and check for the log space now. So it is still 98%, right? It means that uh, some of the transactions are still in active state. So let me check that. How many VLFs are still in active state? One, two, three, four, five, zero, zero. And after that from uh, 39. So four and from 39 to 39 to 90, so it is 51. 55 VLFs are still in active state. That's why I see. Sir, can can, can mm -hmm. we perform back three, four times transaction log backup? Yes, yes. That is what I'm going to do next. And then it will allow us to shrink the file. Three or four times we can do. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, Sometimes, yeah. That uh, is. Yeah, yeah. That is what I am going to to, to do <laughs> next, right? Okay. There is no way. That is the only way we have, right? Right, sir. So if your uh, transact by taking a transaction log backup at one time, if it uh, uh, doesn't change the status of most of the VLFs to two to zero, you have to take the transaction log backup multiple times, two times, three times, four times. So take it. Uh, now it's twelve six p.m. So do it again. <clears throat> Take the transaction log backup. That is done. And check for the log space again. Uh, it is 98%. Still try to shrink the file. And check for the log space again. 98% still it is. Let us do it again. Uh, that is done. Uh, some, some problem is there, I think. I will have to do something different. So check for the log info. Now it is changed perhaps. No, it's still not. Log space. Still it is 98%, right? So now what should be the next option? Next option is to, as Max said, that we have to call the checkpoint process explicitly here. Let us try that. We did that and now check for the log space. 98% still it is. Uh, take the transaction log back up. Okay, let us do the checkpoint here. Oh, here we did, right? So for this checkpoint was called for this transaction. Come here. Mm, we did it also. Checkpoint. Now come to this and take the log back up here and then check for the log space 98%. It is not shrinking here, so uh, let us shrink it to the initial size or go with say. 1024 1 GB. No, 
now check for the log space oh it's surprising why it is not happening here come to gui now what is, is there some different settings we have options it is in full recovery mode that's fine go to task shrink files and here this is the gui method you can go through task shrink come to the log file and under the log file currently allocated the space is uh, near about 1 gb you can say and available free space is only 1% uh, so released unused space reorganized space before you leave shrink file 2 so if I shrink this file to this size let us see what is happening I specified that size So if log backup is not clearing, the another method is, ideally it should be cleared, right? If log space is 100% used, it should be cleared in the fashion we are doing. If nothing is working, we can go with full backup. So this is what I'm first time I'm experiencing that log backup is unable to uh, truncate the logs. How many of you are free at 9 p.m. IST most of the days? Sir, me. Sir, uh, you are free for working days? Yes. Okay, for coming week I'm free, but uh, I do have shifts from 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. So that would be a little difficult. Because, because I am planning uh, to have some classes uh, you know, on weekdays at 9 p.m. if you all have time, because the way I am delivering the training, uh, I, I suppose that it mm -hmm. will be not covered in, in six weekends, right? Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we can plan it, sir. Uh, we'll manage it out. No problem. No problem. Uh, it's, it should be, you know, uh, workable for all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it not for one or two. All have to agree on a proper time, right? Mm -hmm. My shift is from mm. uh, eleven thirty to nine pm, sir. Uh, oh, okay that's for me. You I can manage them. Yeah, you can manage. So, what Max says, what uh, Irmia uh, says. Hi, I, from uh, on the uh, Monday you to all Friday. Are working? I, am not, I am not able. Yeah, yeah. So you all oh. are working from home. Anybody is working from office? Yes, sir, me. I'm in Bargo. I'm working I, from... Uh -huh. I want to ask, uh, what's the question about the uh, time of uh, lessons? And uh, can you repeat the question? The question is that if all are okay to have some extra classes on working days at 9 p.m. IST, right? So I can make at least two, three classes in a week because the way we are proceeding uh, for learning this SQL DBA stuff, I suppose it will be not covered in uh, six weekends because 
you know my objective is always to uh, feed you proper knowledge it's not all about just covering the syllabus so you might have seen that uh, uh, the topics which are coming if you are not known to that i'm, I'm just going through that and I, I i try to deliver my best right so the problem is that uh, i would not appreciate myself but my knowledge is vast and whenever okay. anything anything is start i start from the <laughs> different topic right okay so, uh, what's uh, the date uh, monday friday and so on what days so it's it's also about my ability right <laughs> what i will do what i will do uh, uh what i mean i earlier sir yeah, I mean, maybe yes. oh, i i should log in uh, indian time uh, 9 30 i should be uh, online for my work mm -hmm. so what if we we can make uh, if you uh, if it is possible and if you are available we can make it earlier earlier so we can then. skip this in recording it's already recording yeah oh okay okay no no it's not like that recording uh, will help you but live session is always more helpful for you right you you pay more attention you have liberty to ask questions you have liberty to interact these are the things there live sessions uh, have you know uh, a, a a big impact uh, of learning right uh, I'm not in favor that if someone uh, misses, right, and he will be provided with recording, he will go through that. So I, I do not uh, like to go in that fashion. You all have to come on a common page, right? And if possible, think then only we can do that. What he's saying is uh, let's discuss it uh, out of the record, right? Yes, yes, exactly. That yeah. uh, let's discuss it uh, off the recording. <laughs> And otherwise, what okay, we can uh, do? One proposal is uh, on weekend, we can have two classes each day. That will also like help us. Yes, to... yes, yes. So if I will be free, uh, so we can also have classes in the night time also, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, 9 to 10 or 9 to 11, whatever suits, right? We can have. So, so we will yes. plan on that. Okay, mm -hmm. no problem. I will uh, drop a mail uh, mm -hmm. to have a survey from all of you. And mm -hmm. accordingly, we can plan. Otherwise, it is tough, tough to you know finish the syllabus in six weekends. Even um, in two months, we will be not able to cover the syllabus. A lot of things are there. Okay, so the full backup is completed. Let us see uh, the status of log space now. And still, it is ninety-eight percent. It's surprising why it is happening. Let me do the shrink now. Shrink it multiple times. So the log is space. What is the log info now? It means that there is some problem with the transactions. Let us check for active uh, transactions. Uh, in DBCC string file command, there is an option truncate only. Uh, here we are giving parameter size, comma, truncate only option is here. No, I don't want to use that. Mm, how to check the active transactions in a database? SP underscore Udo. Session fifty eight. I am here. It's not working properly. Select star from sys dot sys processes where SPID 
uh, to the five then and status equals to running or status equals to runnable. Only this one it is showing active. Mm. One command is there to check active transaction. Oldest active transaction. What is that? Do you do do anyone remember that? DBCC open tran. Yes, yes, that is the command. Yes, oldest active transaction is 54. Transaction information for database. Name user transaction OS21. This, this is a 54. This was the insert went 10 times. If I commit it, let us focus on this. And then we run the checkpoint to harden it. And if we then check the transaction log back up, where is that? Twenty one execute that is done. Low space. Still, it is not free. If I kill fifty four, what is happening? Just a minute, guys. I will be back in two minutes. Resume recording. So the wheel of the state is still in the same position. It has not changed. Uh, let us check the log back up now. Uh, 26. Execute. Now see it's taking time. Okay, so that is done. Now check for the log space. Still 98%, do some shrinking. And then check for the log space. So now it's 99% from 98 to 99%, right? Something interesting. What should I do now? Come here. Oh, and check for open tron. Do we have a still oldest active transaction 54 is still there? That's the problem. Under 54, we have this insert statement. Okay. So let us come here. Let us try these all here also. Uh, 
It went in hunger state. There's the problem. This transaction is just stuck 54. Still it is just stuck. And that's why we are unable to reduce the log space. So the only way uh, is to kill it. But while I am killing it, it is not being killed. Uh, open Tron, where is that? It is 54. So finally, we have to kill 54. It's so incompleted. Let us read the error log, whether it is undoing or not. SP read error log. Let us go back. It's showing 54 was killed. So it was killed. But if I run my open tron, still it is showing. Transaction information for the database. This oldest active transaction is 54. This is the problem here. This is the problem. We have to deal with this transaction. We have, we do not have explicit rollback the, statement. Yes. DVCC input buffer, what is in it? In this aspect? Mm -hmm. We can check that. So see here, 54 is this, where, where it gone? Oh, we don't have 54 now. It's gone, right? Right. So nothing will be shown there in the input buffer. Invalid, it is gone. So, if it was killed, why it is showing the active oldest transaction is there? Yes, it is gone now. No active open transactions is there. Now, if I come and uh, take the log back up, it's 32 now. It's done. And if I shrink this log file now, it is done. If I check the log space now, yes, that is done. So now it is 4% only, right? So the, sometimes you are stuck. So it was good that we are stuck there. Uh, so remedy is ultimately if, if the VLF state is not changed right now you see that most of the vlfs are in a state zero maybe one or two vlf uh, maybe in two state that has to be that is not a problem so now you can see out of six ninety four vlfs 
you know, earlier there were only 66 VLFs. Now we have 94 VLFs. So as your database size grow, rise uh, VLF size grow, there will be more VLFs. Uh, that is the another learning. Uh, the second thing is that if you see that after taking the log backup, right, uh, and uh, uh, syncing the log file, right, still uh, the log space is not claimed, right? I mean that if this log space is not being reduced, now we can see from 99%, uh, it, it has come to uh, 4%. So in that case, you will have to identify the active transaction in the database. Your database context would be the database in which uh, you did the transaction. And you should check for the active transaction using the DBCC open tran command. And uh, you should try with first with auto commit, right? Uh, sorry, first with uh, commit and checkpoint to make the transaction committed right and harden to disk and before that you should issue the set exact about command so set exact about on when uh, you issue this command sql server completely follows uh, the rules established by the atomicity property for transactions so atomicity is implemented in sql server for transactions using set exact about on and that's the problem we have with implicit transactions you have seen here. If it was an explicit transaction, I suppose there was no problem that we saw because there is explicit commit. What I'm saying you are getting, if I have yes, run this command, this transaction as an explicit transaction is starting with begin tron and with explicit commit, go 10 and after that commit, right? then the problem that you have seen should not have been in the picture. But if that problem has come now, then to meet the atomicity for transaction, first you have to issue the set exact about one command followed by commit and that checkpoint. If still it is not working, then finally you have to kill that transaction, right? So this is what we have learned with this issue. Uh, and uh, it's better for you that you have seen some issue also in the picture. And finally, we were able to resolve that, right? So guys, this is all from me for today. And uh, by topic, we have not covered recovery model and uh, uh, different kinds of backups we have with point in time DS store that we have not discussed yet. So in the coming class, right, uh, we will talk about that and i will drop a mail regarding the timing uh, if uh, those who are not in uh, ist they will have to convert their time right in ist and see the feasibility if you can uh, make yourself available at that time i will be happy to deliver you know classes on that time because the way we are proceeding uh, the way i am delivering the training i think that we are starting from basic and going to the advanced level, uh, right? So you day by day, you are attending the, attending the class. Definitely you are gaining some new knowledge. I hope so. And, uh, and uh, uh, I think that uh, overall training should be knowledge oriented. It should not be topic oriented, right? Uh, it's not like that, that I just selected the topic and I will deliver that. The objective is to provide you uh, integrated knowledge, how the topics are integrated to each other, how you can implement your knowledge, right? That can be possible only when integrated knowledge uh, will be delivered to you. So this is what I am trying to uh, deliver. And I think that that will be uh, very much beneficial for all of you. If you learn uh, the things in integrated way, uh, most of the uh, trainers, what they do, they say, select the topic, for example, they will select, uh, you know, recovery model. These are the recovery models, right? You can set recovery models in this way, but they will not teach you how these recovery models are related to the recovery of database, right? So I'm trying to, uh, you know, integrate all these things all together. And uh, definitely it is going to take time more than the schedule I have shared with all of you. So I request you all of you to make yourself available uh, at a, uh, you know, common time. And then uh, I will try to deliver classes on that time also. Okay. 
so it can be a working day or it can be even uh, you know uh, night timing in ist uh, for uh, you know uh, sunday and saturday and sunday so this is all from me guys if you have anything uh, to say if you have anything to ask feel free to ask uh, sir along with the recording can you please also send us this different phases of database recovery document along with the uh, yeah, sure, transaction sure. log architecture Sure, sure. We'll do that. Thank you, sir.